so the skin of the soul is thick hairless contains numerous uh, sweat glands and is firmly bound to the underlying deep fascia with the help of fibrous bands called skin ligaments regarding cutaneous innervation of the sole of foot starting uh, from the region of the heel going towards the toes over the plantar surface of the foot that is the sole area the region of the heel as you can see in this diagram is receiving the medial and lateral calcaneal branches from the tibial nerve medially and sural nerve laterally right then for majority part central part two thirds of the medial side of sole its skin is innervated by the medial plantar nerve branch from the tibial nerve and lateral third is supplied by the lateral plantar nerve again a branch of tibial nerve and a very small portion just distal to the heel uh, along the medial margin of the foot is supplied by saphenous nerve which is all the way coming down from the femoral nerve then coming over the toes plantar surfaces of the toes the medial 3 and 1/2 toes are supplied by the plantar surface of medial 3 and 1/2 toes is supplied by the medial plantar nerve and the plantar surface of the lateral 1 and 1/2 toes is supplied by the lateral plantar nerve you can compare this distribution of the uh, sensory supply to the skin of the sole to the to that of the palm of the hand in comparison with the median nerve and ulnar nerve so this was all about the cutaneous innervation of the uh, skin of sole of foot regarding the subcutaneous tissue or the superficial fascia of the sole of the foot in comparison to the superficial fascia of the dorsum of the foot this uh, fascia is thick fibrous in nature in structure whereas the superficial fascia of the dorsum of the foot or the superior aspect of the foot is loose this is of great clinical significance because uh, in some clinical conditions uh, swellings appear over the foot and where do those swellings particularly appear in the region of foot over the dorsum of the foot where the subcutaneous tissue or the superficial fascia of the dorsum of the foot is loose and why not over the sole of the foot because in the region of the subcutaneous uh, tissue or superficial fascia of the uh, sole of the foot uh it is very firm and thick and fibrous densely fibrous in structure so this is why edema or the swelling in certain clinical conditions uh appears over the dorsum of the foot so regarding the subcutaneous tissue or the superficial fascia of the sole of the foot it is very fibrous in structure very thick in uh, uh thickness um as compared to the superficial fascia elsewhere on the body it also uh, is arranged um, uh, with the help of uh, fibrous ligaments that arise from the underlying skin going towards the deep fascia and those fibrous bands are called skin ligaments these skin ligaments uh, or the fibrous bands divide the subcutaneous tissue of the sole of foot into various small compartments which are filled with fat this property this characteristic of subcutaneous tissue of the sole of foot is very helpful when it comes to functioning as a shock absorber because it provides uh, this property of the subcutaneous tissue provides shock absorbing pad especially over the region of the heel secondly the fibrous bands that arise from the skin pass through the subcutaneous tissue to the 
uh, deep uh, fascia of the sole of foot. They provide firm anchorage, firm grip to the underlying skin over the above lying or superior lying deep fascia. Hence, increasing the grip of the skin of sole of foot, as well as helps to limit the mobility of the skin. All these um, points, they are of clinical significance and physiological significance because these points improve the functioning of the sole of foot. Secondly, we move on to the We move on uh, to the deep fascia of the sole of foot. Deep fascia of the sole of foot is also labeled as plantar fascia. It is also called plantar fascia. The central part of this fascia is thickened to form the plantar aponeurosis, just like the palmar aponeurosis of the palm of upper limb. And the medial and lateral parts of this plantar fascia are very weak and thin. Central part is the thickest most, and it is this part that is labeled as plantar fascia. The uh, plantar aponeurosis, sorry. What are the different functions of the plantar fascia this fascia of the sole of foot, the fascia of the sole of foot, holds the different parts of the foot together, protects the sole of the foot along with underlying neurovasculature from injury, as well as provides support to the bony longitudinal arches of the foot, the medial longitudinal arch, the lateral longitudinal arch, and transverse arch. So let's talk about the <clears throat> central thickening of the plantar fascia, which is called plantar aponeurosis. As you can see in this diagram, the plantar aponeurosis proximally is attached to the medial and lateral fibrosities or processes of the bone of heel called calcaneum. Then distally, it's divides into at least five bands one two three four five for each of the five toes then uh, these five bands are said to be further divided into two slips a superficial slip that goes to the skin and a deep slip that further divides into two slips and each of these two flips, they fuse on either side of the fibrous flexor sheath for the long flexor tendons of the sole of foot. As well as these two slips from the deep slip of the uh, each of these band also fuses with the deep transverse metatarsal ligament. It is this ligament which is going to unite the plantar ligaments of the joint, which joint metatarsophalangeal joints. Then secondly, this, these bands of the plantar aponeurosis also receive reinforcement from the superficial transverse metatarsal ligaments, which are here in this diagram you can see the transverse fibers uniting the adjacent two bands with each other at the level of the heads of metatarsal bones. So this was all about the uh, plantar fascia, its central thickening, plantar aponeurosis, its proximal and distal attachments, and its various functions. Now we move on to facial compartments of the sole of foot. So with the help of uh, 
intermuscular septa that arise from the medial and lateral uh, sides of the plantar aponeurosis and they get attached over the first metatarsal and fifth metatarsals respectively they divide uh, the sole of the foot into at least five compartments fine <clears throat> those compartments are uh, they include the medial compartment central compartment lateral compartment and then we have uh, intrauterine compartment and a superior most compartment called dorsal compartment in this diagram you can follow these colors and look uh, and recognize each of these compartments according to their color distribution so let's start with the medial compartment medial compartment the plantar fascia covering the medial compartment is very thin and the contents of the medial compartment include this here you can see in the blue the medial compartment and its contents include muscles such as abductor hallucis flexor hallucis brevis and tendon of flexor hallucis longus the neurovasculature present in this compartment includes the medial plantar nerve and medial plantar vessels central compartment is the one that lies deep to the plantar aponeurosis hence the fascia over this compartment is very thick in the form of plantar aponeurosis uh, here in the green you can see the compartment and its contents include flexor digitorum brevis flexor hallucis longus tendon flexor digitorum longus tendon quadratus plantae muscle lumbricals and adductor hallucis the nerves present in this compartment is the lateral plantar nerve and same named vessels that is lateral plantar vessels then the lateral most compartment is called the lateral compartment simple as that again the fascia covering this compartment is very thin and the contents include uh, abductor digiti minimi and flexor digiti minimi brevis so after going through the contents of these three compartments you will note down one thing that the abductors for the big toe that is the first digit and abductors for the fifth digit that is the small toe they are located outwards along the medial and lateral edges of the foot right so this is the arrangement of the muscles in the sole of foot then next compartment we have the interosseous compartment interosseous between the bones which bones metatarsals so the contents include metatarsals dorsal and plantar interosseous muscles deep plantar and metatarsal vessels then we have a superior compartment towards the dorsum of the foot here you can see in the red this compartment is called dorsal compartment this particular compartment lies between the dorsal fascia of the dorsum of the foot and tarsal bones as well as dorsal interosseous fascia the fascia covering the interosseous muscle hence this compartment is located almost in the dorsum of the foot the contents include extensor hallucis brevis extensor digitorum brevis and neurovasculature supplying the dorsum of the foot so this was all about the sole of the foot uh, cutaneous innervation uh subcutaneous tissue or superficial fascia deep fascia and its central thickening or modification in the form of plantar aponeurosis and then we uh, went through different facial compartments of the foot in the next lecture inshallah we shall um, cover the layers of the sole of the 